Do you have a brother? I do. You know my brother, Vinny. Vinny? Yeah. Yeah. I love him. Yeah. I love Vinny. That's so funny. <laughs> I'll tell him. I'll tell him this happened. <laughs> yeah. Tell him I said hi. Hey, Vinny. Hi. hi. How are hi. you? Good. How are you? What a surprise to see you. <laughs> Listen, I had to. Like, I had to. I'm so obsessed with this show already. It's so good. Oh, thank you. That means, listen, you're, you, you get it. You're, you're legit. You've been there from the beginning. So I, <laughs> that means a lot that you love it. That's so I, great. I mean, this is sort of part of why I'm so excited to talk to you about it is because it feels like a really, I mean, I know in the grand scope of things, it's not that long, but it feels like a long time coming here and for it to finally be happening. You know, what was it like seeing Iman in that Captain Marvel costume or like seeing the family sitting at the dinner table coming to life from these panels? Oh my God, so surreal. I have to say the first few weeks, especially in, in as we were gearing towards production, but in prep, when we were in deep prep, it was um, really trippy. We had like one moment where the, we, the family had arrived together and they were sitting on a mock dining table, um, you know, that was like in the middle of this really big stage. And they were just sitting and chatting and I was like walking up to them and I was like, wow, this is the Khan family. This is crazy to me. Like, you know, and I'm sending pictures to Willow and I'm like, this is real, this is crazy. So for me, that was in itself like one of the the the, the trippiest things and, and seeing Iman in the Captain Marvel costume was so cool and she was so excited. And, and of course seeing her in the official Miss Marvel costume, like so many little moments like that, which I feel like are like, you know, burned in my core memories that I'm just never going to forget. Yeah, I'm, I imagine it must feel like almost overwhelming sometimes to be like, that is, wow, it's it's like 3D now. Like, that's bananas. Yes, it's bananas. It's, it's bananas is the only way to explain it. <laughs> so something that I think uh, obviously works really well in the show and, and something that the comics did that was so like iconic and revolutionary was kind of this reckoning that Kamala had to have with her identity, right? Yeah. But obviously we are in a very different place than we were in 2013. And so it looks a little different on the show in, in a great way, I think. But how did you go about sort of like adapting and updating that part of the story? Yeah, I mean, I think uh, the, at the essence of it, it is really Kamala trying to, um, you know, obviously navigate all these different aspects of her identity. And I still think, you know, like looking at this desire for her to go, I think this desire for her to go to this cosplay competition was really kind of the source of it. It kind of told you everything is like, why does it matter so much for this young woman to go to this event where she puts on a costume and becomes somebody else effectively, you know, right? And it's just this idea of, of, of visibility, of, of desiring to be seen, but her not being comfortable enough in her own skin to actually show herself as herself, right? She has to go and masquerade as somebody else. And I think that actually complemented the the comics really well because that's what the comics did, right? The first time that she gets power, she transforms into Captain Marvel, right? So that says kind of also the, it, it's a very, to me, actually, it's quite similar. I kept thinking a lot about that of like, okay, well, in the comics, she becomes, she looks like Carol Danvers. And I, what are we trying to do? And so that's something that we try to inject in some of the ways that when she first gets powers, how does she use them, you know? And how does she kind of masquerade as something else and and then sort of everything that comes from it. Something that, that I'm excited to see where it goes is this, you know, focus on mothers and daughters and the legacy of generational power and pain and kind of how that intersects with the marvelness of it all, right? Yeah. Like that's that's something that's so wonderful to see. So can you, I, I know that we're only two episodes, we can only really talk about two episodes, yeah. but just sort of how it was writing that in, how it was working that in with Kamala's story uh, and what that's been like. Yeah, I mean, I think what is so great, I think also is very true to the comics was about sort of these relationships with her past. Like, I think the bangle always represented that, you know, that beautiful moment where, you know, Bruno get, gets the bangle from from Maniba and she her telling her where she got it from her, her, her family. And I think that was really the core of what made the comics really special and something that the writers and Bisha really pulled out into the story. That's really the first thing that I, I remember calling Bisha after I got all the scripts. And I was like, Bisha, this is the story. I was like, the story is about these women. I was like, the story is about what, you know, the 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 legacy that they've kind of inherited from one another and also 
and the pain and the trauma that has been inherited and how that affects their relationships and their dynamics. And I think exploring that is going to be very, very interesting and very subtle and simple. And I think that's really what we wanted to kind of play around with in the show is, is telling that story, especially because we don't often see, I mean, certainly you're not seeing stories of, of young people of color, but certainly not like women, not, there's not many stories of young women of color, young Muslim women of color. Um, that's something that we were really excited to tell that female perspective. Yeah, seeing that conversation around the dinner table where they talk so frankly about partition and the impact it had was, yeah. I, I don't think I've ever seen anything like that on Western TV. Yes, uh, yes, just just you wait, Henry Higgins is all I'm gonna say. <laughs> <laughs> I wanna say like how incredible it was to see this multifaceted, authentic version of this family on screen just absolutely meant the world to me and yeah. so what was that like like the roles of immigrant parents or like the older brother finding his faith can be mired in stereotypes sometimes and this felt very real so how did you approach these characters and did you feel any sort of added weight while you were thinking about that well i, I felt like these characters were really close to home for all of us i didn't have to pull from places that i usually have to pull from when I'm acting, uh, but I, I pulled from home. I pulled from like real life, normal experiences, you know? Um, uh, yeah, what, what, what do you guys yeah, think? Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. I mean, we, uh, you know, Muniba is that South Asian mother. There are variants, there are more lenient ones, there are stricter ones, more, but the prototype is right there. And I mean, we all are South Asian, whether we were raised in this country, like Sagar and Iman, or you know, we were raised in Mumbai like Mohan and I. So there's that that's that that come that foundation is there, and um, so no pressure there. I was cognizant though that, you know, yes, it's not a Muslim story, but uh, ha having lived in this country for so many years and seeing the response to Muslims, especially post 9/11. You uh, you wanted to be of service to that that aspect of the story as well. You know, it's and funny uh, whenever things would happen on the screen that were like really relatable to me and my parents. I brought my parents to the premiere. They were sitting right. next to me. I kept on like looking at them to see if like they caught that. Hey, this has happened with us before. Right. And I don't think they did. <laughs> they didn't. They were just watching. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I did want to talk about the parents for Mohan and uh, Zenobia. When it comes to those roles, like I agree, like I was watching and I was like, I feel like I'm at home and I'm, I'm having a little like some flashbacks, you know? But what I loved was like, in addition to some of those more like, yes, there are rules and, and you have these things that you have to do as kids for your, for your parents. There was so much joy. There was so yeah. much like wonderful connection. Um, how did you find that balance for the two of you as the parents? The script gave us everything. And for me to turn around and say that, oh, you know, I've harked back to this, I harked back. Honestly, the script gave us our family. It gave us a family day. It gave us a family situation. We just had to play into it from what we come from, as they said, that, that that's what we've been through all our lives. So the fact that you related to that, you said that, you know, it felt like you went through flashbacks. It's because that's everything. And it's not screaming in your face to say, hey, listen, remember this? No, it's just something that happened. And that's the beauty of writing. So for me, that was, it was, everything was in the writing. Yeah, the writing, it has to start with the writing. And then hopefully you have, you know, some chemistry with, with the family you're creating. And um, that's not, you know, you build that and there's different layers of that. And uh, you just let it flow as organically as it's going to and you keep the, the foundation of the South Asian-ness there. It, it did feel quite revolutionary to me, honestly, to see a family presented without the focus kind of being on the representation, if that makes sense, like the focus, exactly. Absolutely. right? Like it's Absolutely. not a commentary. Yep, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. It just is. You don't want to bury the lead, you know, like you just, it's there. We are, we're Muslim. We get it. We're Pakistani Muslim family, middle class from uh, New Jersey. That's the baseline here. We don't have to keep hitting you over the head with it. We just have to be and you'll get it. Yeah. Uh, Sagar, I have to ask, yeah. are you an older brother? Because <laughs> it felt very real. I am an older brother. Yeah, I am an older brother. <laughs> I have, uh, I'm, I'm also a younger brother. I'm a middle child of three boys. 
Uh, so I don't have a sister. Um, so, you know, Iman just made it really easy to older brother her. Uh, I, I was really lucky <laughs> that I have Iman to, to work with, to play off of, uh, because she just did an incredible job. She has an older brother, so she already knew how to treat one. <laughs> And, and I just, you know, I'm an improviser at heart and I just, uh, I played with what she gave me. Zenobia, I, I wanna ask you about Muniba's story and obviously no spoilers, mm -hmm. um, but can you tell me sort of about what you can tell me and this connection between mothers and daughters and this legacy of power that, it, that seems to be coming? Yeah, that's pretty much what you said it. <laughs> <laughs> you answered your own question because that's about all I can tell you. Oh um, no. <laughs> but yes, there's a strong mother-daughter legacy here in this story. Okay, what are you hoping fans get out of the series? I would like to 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 definitely have some sort of move the needle a little bit towards normalizing the Muslim experience. That I would like that, and I would like them to have joy because it's very joyous, it's very vibrant, it's very colorful, it's full of life. Um, there's generational, you know, there's the mother, father, and then there's the kids and the school and the different aspects. So it's there's something for everybody. So, and it's joyous, colorful, vibrant show. Have fun. Yeah, I just want the audience to see that Marvel has given you something again and it's completely different from what Marvel has ever done. What I want people to get out of it is, you can be more than one thing. Right. You don't have to put yourself in a box. You can do it all. Awesome, thank you all so much. This was thank wonderful. You. Thank bye you. Bye. Do you have a brother? I do, you know my brother Vinny. Vinny? Yeah, I yeah. love, oh I love Vinny. That's so funny. <laughs> I'll tell him. I'll tell him this happened. <laughs> yeah, tell him I say hi. I, I had to will. return a text. I had so many. I haven't. I didn't get to re respond <laughs> to any of your texts last night. But yeah, tell him I said hi. I will. Thank you. Bye.